namely the whole of the West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem as its capital. That's the law. That's what the World Court said. All right, we'll take a question from the gentleman in the third row, you, sir. In reference to uh, what the proposition said about the media, the National Union of Journalists in this country uh, voted to boycott uh, Israel. Uh, there have been plenty of moves to boycott Israeli academics. Your point if the is... pro-Israel lobby is so successful, where were they on that one? Where were they when the National Union of Journalists boycotted Israel? Where were they when the, when the, unions of, uh, the academic unions boycotted Israel? Well, well, well I might also add that, that a boycott of Israel by the National Union of Journalists is the definition of stifling debate. Well, no, they didn't stifle, they didn't, to be fair, Martin, you should, as you probably know, they didn't, they boycotted to stop, buy, they uh, agreed to stop buying Israeli goods. They didn't say they'd stop writing about Israel. Um, they didn't boycott coverage. The academic, the academic union, We're talking, I was talking about excuse the me, the academic yeah. union said that they would not they would not, uh, they would not uh, collaborate with any Israeli professors, no matter what field it was in. Well, they were, I mean, they were following on the precedent that was actually rather successfully followed with relation to South Africa, so comparison that people don't like making. So you're in favor of that? I'm, I don't actually, boycotts generally, no, I'm not in favor of boycotts, oh, but they were. Why, if you think it was okay to boycott South Africa. Why not stop it? What? If they're so powerful, if they Well, so they did actually, is there a boycott? What's that? Is there a boycott? Yes. Yes, are, is, are British academics boycotting no. Israel? They voted to boycott. I don't think so. No, and the vote, just, just a matter of clarification, the vote was rescinded um, uh, uh, after a pretty short time by a recall conference. Because, because, the, union, because the union was disbanded, I, I believe. Uh, well, well, the, or the, it merged the union, with another union. The fact is the vote was made. If the pro-Israel lobby is so powerful, why couldn't they stop it well, from voting yes? It right away. I mean, it's. Uh, no, oh, okay. I think you've answered That's, your own. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Let's, we're, hold on. No, we're going to deal no. with this very quickly, and then we're going to move Tim, on. Listen to that. Just listen to what that man just said. They got Good. it yes, rescinded. I'll tell you who got it rescinded. The members of the union who didn't like it got it rescinded. They, whoever they are, Andrew, those shadowy people didn't get it rescinded. So that was a that one. No, that was a democratic vote. Maybe you don't quite get that thought. Okay. Yeah. Gentlemen at the back, you've had your hand up for a long time. Um, I just wanted to ask if the lobby is not so strong. Why has Congress or the Senate never, ever in its history for the last 30 years passed anything against Israel? Nothing. The proposition is not that the lobby is Why strong the lobby or not strong. strong. The lobby is strong. I, it's strong in Congress. That's where it, where it manifests itself. And that's the reason. There is strong support for Israel in the US and Congress. You don't think that a stifled debate in terms of at least the administration and politicians, where a newspaper like Haaretz has a column called The Israel Factor, where it grades every single politician out of 10 for how good they are for Israel. None of them are against Israel, it's just which is the best for Israel and which is the least worst. And they compete with each other, Democrats, Republicans, it doesn't matter. How is that not a stifling of debate in the most important thing, political sphere? I think you, that what you're doing is conflating several different things here. That, that the lobby is powerful in Congress and ensures that the Congress is supportive of Israel is true. Does that mean that the lobby stifles debate? No, that's not true. There's a huge debate that goes on in the United States. And your example of Haaretz is an Israeli newspaper anyway. No, but there's no American newspaper that's running a poll. I'm sorry, like, can I just come on this? The only debate I've seen in terms of the Israeli war and Hezbollah, for example, the only debate I saw was Democrats attacking Bush for being too soft on Hezbollah and not supporting Israel enough. Like a motion was passed saying, uh, not a motion was passed, but no, so but many were, were saying, why isn't he supporting them look, more? It's a, it's a complicated world, you know, there are there a number... <laughs> There are, I'd just like to make there a are a number of Arab states who are cheering Israel on as well, and a number of Lebanese who are cheering Israel on as well in that war. Not many. Okay. I, I, okay. Just, I, just, I just need to say, at this just point, about the point Congress, it's not just the, if it was just the Congress, it would be a very different situation. I mean, we, you know, we've heard comparisons with the National Rifle Association lobby, very powerful, supremely powerful in Congress. But you can get up and run for office against 
uh, the National Rifle Association for gun control, and no one tries to demonize you or drove, drive you out of public life. That's different with the Israel lobby. It's, it's, it's across, it's the Congress, it's the executive branch, and it's in, in the culture, right. in the media. All right, gentlemen, almost at the back. Thank, thank you. Um, a number of times during this debate, uh, Barack Obama's remarks have uh, come up, and uh, unlike Mr. Coburn, the uh, gentleman to my left uh, quoted him correctly, saying that um, uh, no one is suffering as much as the Palestinians. And the main thing about that statement is it's demonstrably false, because it doesn't matter if you take violent death, GDP per head, infant mortality, average life expectancy, there are a huge amount of people suffering more than Palestinians. Nevertheless, I think most people would agree that the Israeli-Palestinian situation receives more airtime in the Western media than any other foreign problem. Given this, it's clear that there is, an Israeli, there is a debate about Israel and that your problem is not that it's, it's been stifled, because it's not, because it's uh, out of all proportion to its genuine importance. Your problem is that you haven't got the hegemony over the debate that you think you deserve and that, frankly, you can't hack it. Um, well, I, I, have have say, I have to say, first of all, Obama was, was, in, was clear, was talking in the context of Israel-Palestine. So um, it's really your point is kind of <clears throat> beside the point. Um, no, no one's demanding hegemony. Well, no one on this side is demanding hegemony over the debate. We're just, we're just pointing out that the debate is very one-sided. That, for example, Martin may have told the Congress that the Saudi initiative, the initiative offers a full withdrawal. Um, but we don't read that in the papers. The American people... Well, he stifled himself. <laughs> no, the, he How did you manage no, that, Martin? <laughs> no, Martin didn't stifle. I think he's, he may have said it in full expectation it wouldn't be a headline in the New York Times the next day. Someone <laughs> earlier said... I'm a someone, great, someone I'm a great advocate said, of the Saudi initiative because I'd like to see this problem solved. Okay, let him, and I think let him, the Arab state stepping up... Let him finish, up his, point. Let let him finish his point. It's frequently said, <laughs> I think I've heard it from the hall here tonight, that Hamas, no one... Um, you know, Mark David was saying that the European governments refused to uh, have the impose the sanctions on Hamas because they refused to recognize Israel's right to exist. Question from the lady in the third row, please. The argument is that the lobby can stifle debate as it's very powerful. Well, do you believe that an Islamic lobby in the U.S. could ever have as much power as the Israeli lobby does? There are more Muslims, American Muslims than there are American Jews, but, but they're not organized as a monolithic uh, community. Uh, they, you know, there are Pakistani Muslims, there are Arab Muslims, uh, there are black Muslims. And uh, uh, on the other hand, in the Jewish community, you know, if you have two Jews, you have three organizations. They're probably the most highly organized people in the world. You just and wanted so, to come back for a moment. What did you want to say? Do you believe that this division is what makes it difficult uh, for the Islamic lobby to actually gain as much power? Well, I, th I think it's just a reality that, that, that Muslims in America have one common interest, which is how they are treated in the United States, and they're treated as American citizens. There have been problems after 9-11, which they have managed to organise to lobby about and get their interests protected. But they don't have Palestine as their number one interest. Some of them do, All right. most of them don't. Okay, there are a lot more questions out there, but unfortunately we've come to the point in the proceedings where we're going to vote on the motion. The motion that this House believes that the pro-Israel lobby has successfully stifled Western debate about Israel's actions. Will you please take the electronic voting machines? If you want to vote for that motion, you press button one and then the OK button. If you want to vote against, it's button two and the OK button. And would you please do that now? You only have to press each button once. Uh, through the wonders of modern science, your vote will then be communicated to the computers and we should have the result for you any moment now. It should be coming up on our screens. There it is. 65.6% for the motion, 34.4% against. The motion has been resoundingly carried. All it remains for me to do is to thank our distinguished speakers for coming today. They, some of them have traveled a great distance to be here. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks to you, the audience, as well. The Doha debates will be back again next month from Doha, but for now, from the Oxford Union and all of us on the team, good night. Thanks very much for coming. Good night.